Premier League, Tottenham's fall from Champions League finalists in 2019 to drubbing at the hands of Arsenal a flick by Dele Alli sends Lucas Moura racing into the Ajax penalty area. A sweep of a left foot later, and the Brazilian sends an entire fan base into a state of delirium. Talismanic manager Mauricio Pochettino tearfully embraces his staff and players. Close to the fifth anniversary of his arrival at Spurs, the Argentine has taken the club from the Europa League to Champions League regulars. Overcome with emotion, he sinks to his knees. 1704 BST September 26, 2021 London over two years later. Harry Kane sinks to his knees as BK Osaka fires Arsenal into a three goal lead over their arch rivals with barely half an hour played. As stone faced manager Nuno Asierto Santo watches on, staring down the barrel of a third consecutive 3 0 league defeat to a fellow London club, some Spurs fans have already begun heading for the exit at the Emirates Stadium. A consolation goal by Sun Heung-min in the closing stages makes the scoreline marginally less embarrassing, but Spurs have been comprehensively embarrassed by an Arsenal side who had begun the campaign with three straight defeats. Spurs ultimately came up short in the 2019 Champions League final, falling 2-0 to Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool in Madrid, a result that many have since earmarked as the team's breaking point. Yet the damage was done long before that night with Spurs currently paying the price for what appears to be a lack of long-term planning. No furniture unfortunately for Spurs, a rampant 93-point season by Antonio Conte's Chelsea denied the North Londoners a first Premier League crown, but there was a sense among fans that, under Pochettino, the club was on the path to success. With the right investment, Spurs could finally get over the line. The following season, Spurs ran riot in a 4-1 dismantling of Liverpool, Nine of the 11 players that Pochettino started the day lined up for the Champions League final against Liverpool in Madrid two years later. For Liverpool's just four. Understandably masked by that incredible Champions League run, it is easy to forget just how poor Tottenham's form was in the second half of the 2018 19 season. They were not the first, nor will they be the last, to embark on a dazzling cup run despite subpar league form. Chelsea's two Champions League triumphs in 2012 and 2021 were marked by sixth and fourth placed finishes respectively, far from the domestic pedigree of supposed European champions. However, it was clear at the time that Spurs were in desperate need of a reboot. Pochettino had worked wonders to take Spurs from a fun team of also rans to a side that fought for the title for two consecutive seasons between 2015 and 2017, but two years later, he was overseeing an aging squad that he had squeezed the maximum from. The blueprint had already been laid out by their eventual conquerors Liverpool, who had shown the potential glory that could come with acute business and strategy. Having been in a similar position to Pochettino's early Spurs sides just a few years prior, the smart reinvestment of fees from the sales of Raheem Sterling and Philip Coutinho into a listen, Virgil van Dijk, Fabinho, and others had transformed Klopp's side into a domestic and European powerhouse. By contrast, Spurs did not buy a single player ahead of the 2018-19 season. When you talk about Tottenham, everyone says you have an amazing house, but you need to put in the furniture Pochettino said, just days before that famous night in Amsterdam. If you want to have a lovely house, maybe you need better furniture. And it depends on your budget if you are going to spend money. Now, it's about creating another chapter and to have the clear idea of how we are going to build that new project. We need to rebuild. It's going to be painful. A cautionary tale and painful it was. In November, following a wretched start to the season, Pochettino was sacked and replaced by former Chelsea hero Jose Mourinho. Tongim Dombiel, Ryan Sessegnon, and Giovanni Lo Celso arrived but Spurs had lost two experienced first-team players in Christian Eriksen and Kieran Trippier. While a rebuild was needed, Trippier and Eriksen were far from over the hill in terms of age, and it is a cruel irony that both have since gone on to win their domestic leagues in Italy and Spain respectively. The move for Paolo Dybala dramatically collapsed due to an agonizing complication over image riots a failed transfer that would have served as a huge statement of intent. Bruno Fernandes, now one of Manchester United's main men and one of the league's best players, was also reportedly a key priority for Spurs that failed to materialise. It remains to be seen whether Nambil, Sessegnon, and Lo Celso will reap long-term benefit for Spurs, 
but the damage had already been done. Granted, they may not have the financial muscles that the likes of Chelsea and the two Manchester clubs regularly flex, but a series of poor recruitment windows have seen Spurs fail to capitalize on the momentum built by Pochettino. The Kane saga of the summer served to encapsulate Tottenham's stasis. Having reportedly sought to dive overboard from a sinking ship onto a Manchester City bond yacht, the failure of this move to materialize has led to the Englishman cutting a dejected figure so far this campaign. Having scored 166 goals in his career, Kane still has yet to find the back of the net this season in the Premier League. Should Kane's poor form continue, there will no doubt be many in the Spurs hierarchy who regret not cashing in on the forward when they had the chance. There is an alternative universe in which Spurs embarked down a Liverpool-inspired, Coutinho-esque rebuild with the Kane funds, but this is not that timeline. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.